Hi Ravens and welcome to another Path of Exile video. Today we're going to talk about heist gear and the best way to interact with the heist mechanic. First of all I'd just like to say that everything in this video is my personal opinion information gathered from the TFT heist channel and most popular opinions. If you're watching this video and you're disagreeing and you disagree that's absolutely fine that is your right and that is your personal opinion the other thing I'd like to state is the most often question I get asked is what is the best heist gear for my rogues and I always reply with what strategy are you running then people seem to get upset the only way I can interpret this for a lot of you out there is when you're mapping you ask you may ask what scarabs do I use on my atlas or in my, in my map device and the most common reply would probably be well what atlas strategy are you running what can content do you like it's the same thing that you can't have the answer what is the best of something unless people know what you're doing so for me I need to know what strategy you're running so I can advise you on the best build and or rogue gear to interact with the way you want to interact with heist so this is why this I have not done this video um, at all because there are so many different permeations of what is good on rogue gear and it all comes down to what strategy are you running so with that in mind let's move on to the next section welcome to the video The next question which is most popular is how do I make the most currency out of heist and again I try to find out what they want to do with heist and advise them how to get the most profit out of the way they want to run heist. The actual answer and I've kept this to myself for a quite a while but the actual answer to make the most profit out of heist is don't run heist don't get upset with me let me explain first of all let's look at the atlas passive tree if my computer would work there we go so and we've already got heist up here so first of all with endless heist gone you're going to need to get into maps to 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 start off with day one there's not no one's going to be bulk selling anything uh, mid league it's easier to get into heist which is why a lot of people wait before that but the actual best way to run heist is to not run it at all what you actually want to do is is day one start of a league uh, even though you could probably do it it just cost you a bit more you run an MF character you run an MF character you find a T16 map that you like and you just run that map every day all day all the time your atlas passive tree will prioritize every single heist node on the tree you take this cluster here the entire cluster the secret stash cluster here you come up you take all three of these if you want huck next to you that's fine doesn't do much to get more currency and stuff unless you gear him in an appropriate way me personally I would just take these through to, to get the extra stash and let Huck stay in the rogue harbor uh, you'd come up you'd come up here you would get this one here to level 5 jobs why because if you have the higher the job skill the quicker the rogue is it's inherently um, integrated into their job speed and then you come up here to get this one high value target special targets to get more rogue marker value you then come up here you take this entire cluster all eight points and then you come round and you come through here these three and you come down to this one for deception agility and engineering the engineering contracts you got two choices you can leave them on the ground or throw them away nobody wants engineering contracts they are trash um, unless GGG change the way talismans are engineering trash don't run it don't try and sell it you, you they won't go anywhere agility and deception are pog deception is the most popular one for Jhana reveals agility 
again my personal opinion is so close to deception because if you've got the right physical mitigation you can just run through the beams and you don't have to worry about it so you want fire arts from there the most likely candidate is to then beast out and take the beast nodes up here like you see I've got and come down here as well possibly take Einhar because he's just redonkulously stonky and will help you kill all the red beasts all of this stuff down here um, I'll update I'll do a passive tree which I which is how I would run it if I was running MF from league start with all the talents and that'll be down down below in the description but yeah and then everything you pick up you sell you bulk sell any essence if you're running essences you bulk sell those any currency you get you sell it for chaos turn the chaos into divination orbs you send turn, um, turn divination zombie into mirrors and that's it that's how you make the most amount of currency out of heist by not running it you want to pick up the green contracts and run the green contracts to drop the uniques contracts and then you can get the twins and if you're lucky you can either sell the twins to someone to run it or you can run it yourself and hope that that amulet drops with uh, leadership's price drops with some really nice rolls and you make bank don't get upset with me but that in my personal opinion is the best way to run heist the reason I say that is because of the costs involved at which point I'll go into the next section when we actually get into the uh, gear rolling etc bear with me see you in the next section in this section we're going to go through the highest gear um, there's a selection in my inventory you can see on the screen and I'll go through it in a moment this section is going over the basics for the new players and a reminder to the older players in case they may have forgotten or have received misinformation from other people who have tried to cover heist so let's get into that everyone's favorite the rogue markers they're just sat there because I can <laughs> there are four items you have a brooch uh, here you have a tool and a piece of gear which are these two I never remember which way they are and frankly it doesn't matter and then a cloak which you can see in the bottom right other than Huck, Huck can only max out at level 3 so you're going to be if you're going to use Huck in your strategy you need to be specific and make sure your filter caters for that most strict filters turn off everything other than level 5 so you're going to need to personalize your filter um, to make sure that level 3 items drop for the sole purpose of gearing out Huck or you can buy it from trade if you're in trade rarity of items and quantity of items unless it specifically states from heist chests or from mobs you kill inside BPs and contracts if you're not killing mobs because you're using a ZDPS build then the rarity and quantity is completely null and void if you are killing mobs then rarity and quantity can be good because then that affects how much gear drops from them like the, the four items I've just showed uh, which you can then either craft yourself for your own rogues or sell to other people so they can then craft it etc TFT does have two channels want to buy want to sell heist gear now so you can always utilize that the cloak is a set implicit 5% reduced raising of alert level at level 5 it does change depending on the level of cloak you have you can get requires job level 2 job level 3 job level 4 and job level 5 end game you want level 5 and everything again except for Huck the brooch is a rarity roll 26 to 30 again it only affects drops from monsters so it's not important unless you're OCD like me and then it's got to be maxed then there's the gear and the tool um, the precise this one here is any job um, so that can be used by anyone regardless of what their job skill is the increase the implicit increased projectile attack damage is from the rogue not you and the roll doesn't matter much like the brooch it's 26 to 30 on the level 5 um, the low level ones obviously have a low level but we're talking end game here so this is the one you want there is no other option for this 
section on your rogues precise arrowhead is the way to go if you have anything else de-equip it start re-rolling and then you have the other one which is job and rogue specific um, it will be specific to the people that can have level 5 naturally why do I say naturally because some of the gear can have plus 1 to jobs and plus 1 to all jobs so you could potentially end up with your rogues having level 7 skills or level 6 skills but unless they naturally can go to level 5 they cannot use an item such as the thaumatatic flash powder which is personalized to Vindiri and its demination this is the one that you want to have maxed out on the implicit you want that job speed so you want to be rolling blessed orbs on there the other item that not specific to rogues that is available when heisting is trinkets and I'll cover that in a different section. So that's the, the four different types of gear. In the next section we'll go over what is best to have on the gear. So in this section, hopefully you haven't skipped the rest of the video, just come to this bit. We're going to go into what I would consider BIS rolls on the gear. You can always hit up Craft of Exile to find out what you would prefer on your gear. It's, it's all there, including trinkets. Trinkets are corrupted and cannot be rolled, but we'll go further into that in the trinkets um, section. I've got some gear in my inventory, so we'll go in there. First of all, I just want to confirm that I am in Standard League because this is where all my best gear is, and it's easier to show you examples of that than to do it in Crucible League where... I haven't really interacted with heist this league so as you can see we've got the gear here we've got my arrowhead cloak brooch and two pieces of gear so uh, as I mentioned earlier in the earlier section you want an arrowhead this is the tier values may be wrong but the actual affixes are correct three out of four I've got the haste skill I've got the flask charges gained, and I've got job speed, and I've got a random affix there. The way I got this was I alt rolled this item, I scoured it, alt rolled it until I hit tier 1 haste, I augged into the job speed, I regaled into the fire damage, thought I'd try my luck, slammed it with an XL, and got the flask charges gained, and I'm done. So um, once I get some more currency, I'll invest heavy further, and then I'll you know go for tier ones, and move on from there. But at the moment, this this uh, arrowhead will suffice. Um, the other prefix, the fourth, the second prefix or the fourth modifier you want would be increased lockdown. Increased lockdown is amazing because that allows you to open some chests um, before the alert goes off, giving or giving you time to get to your end game reward if you've accidentally set the alarm off for whatever reason this is why I love having increased lockdown and if I hit two affixes like haste um, and the fire damage and I regaled into the flask charges gained then I would probably exult and if I got increased lockdown I'd probably still use it just saying on to the cloak this is the BIS perfect item yes the tiers aren't there they're not max rolled but they are the perfect four affixes we've got increased lockdown increased job speed chance on gener um, opening a chest not to generate alert level and reduced raising of alert level from opening chests every single rogue in your company of rogues should have a cloak like this preferably with higher Tears. Brooch. Again, for me, four out of four affixes. I've got the job speed, I've got the RMV, I've got the duplicated currency, and then duplicated maps and catalysts. The first three are perfect, that's what you want on every single brooch. The fourth one is chance to duplicate, insert your preferred content slash uniques. I love running blight maps, I love running, I use catalysts all the time, so for me that's perfect. Again, the tiers aren't 
there. They're not tier one. Tier two is acceptable. Three and four are kind of like, uh, uh, I'll upgrade it later. Then we move on to the gear slot. Uh, so this one is for Nanette, level uh, in perception. I got the chance to um, generate level on opening a chest using perception. Got the plus one all jobs from the on the org, and then regaled into rings. Uh, the rings cut is reduced by a certain percent. That's just a reduction of markers. There are three different roles you can get. It's the rings cut. I think it's the travel fee and the hiring fee. They all reduce the amount of markers you're using on running contracts and blueprints. So if you get that role, if you get something like this, like I did. It, it, you, it's fine, especially if you got to the. Re, it's a tier one reduction, so that's that. The only rogue that requires, in my opinion, absolutely requires plus one level of all jobs is Niles. Taking Gianna into a blueprint is a complete waste of time. She does nothing. She's also known to bug, so she'll do a little like f uh, flash. And she'll disappear and then when you come to a deception door she's supposed to reappear and open it sometimes she doesn't do that <clears throat> which means you can get stuck in your blueprint and you lose that wing because Gianna won't come back Niles doesn't do that so it's another reason to have something like this for Niles admittedly it rolled wrong but uh, I've got the plus one level of all jobs for him and that is priority I haven't dropped another thaumaturgical ward since rolling this and I don't really want to buy one from trade because I can't be bothered it's just laziness but for me Niles the absolute 100% you must have that plus one level to all jobs so he can run the level 5 deception uh, blueprints and Gianna doesn't if you end up with where you need level 5 deception and level 5 counter thaumaturgy, um, you're probably going to have to use Gianna. I don't know anyone that's got a level 4 counter thaumaturgy off the top of my head. Just have a quick check through. There's Niles, the counter thorm. There's no oh, there you go. You get plus 1 level on, on the net and you go Niles and the net. So that's the way to do it. So there's your BIS rolls on your gear. No, not too shabby, really. Um, that's the way to do it, in my opinion. You may have a difference of opinion. You can always check out Craft of Exile. Let me just bring it up. There we go. Boom. -boom. So what you do is you select Heist as the base group. Boom. And then it opens up um, all your different things. Brooch, cloak, contract gear, tools, trinket, all that lot. Um, and then you can then select whichever one you want to do. So that's that. Uh, next section, trinkets. In this section, we're talking about trinkets. So what is the best trinket? Um, there is one, and I'll reiterate, in my opinion, um, and I'll get to it in a moment. I'll show you it on Craft of Exile. I just want to show you a couple of examples first. Uh, a reminder to the more experienced heisters out there, all trinkets drop cor cor corrupted. New information for the new heist players out there. All trinkets drop corrupted. They cannot be changed in any way, shape or form. What you get dropped is what you've got. End of story, full stop. If you're in trade re league, and it's not one you want to use, throw it up for sale. Someone might buy it. Um, in SSF, sorry, you're kind of stuck. Run those thieves trinket blueprints until you get one that's usable. Good luck. Um, I found this in my stash the other day, and it's just been sat there. I'm never going to use it because I like having alteration orbs, um, and I don't want to risk a chance of getting a chaos orb. So I'll sell this later on, put it in my, in my stash tabs to sell. This is the one I've got on this Legacy Endless Heist character, which is double dupe currency. Uh, chance in Heist for dupe basic currency drops to be duplicated. It's only a tier 3, unfortunately. 
And the suffix, again, tier 3, heist chests have a 2% chance to duplicate contained basic currency. The chrome suffusing annoys me, but whatever. Um, the dupe currency, in my opinion, if your trinket, equipped trinket for heisting, does not have dupe, those two dupe currency nodes, your trinket is trash. That's my personal opinion. Currency drops from heist is one of the mainstays of heisting, in my opinion. I say it a lot because I'm trying to iterate the point. Currency drops in heist is the mainstay of heisting. Yes, whatever you get at the end of your Blue Princess contract can make you a lot of divines, but ultimately currency drops really are the backbone of heisting. Um, depending on your strategy, this is what I said in the intro, depends on your strategy, depends what trinket you want. So, duplicate currency, duplicate currency. After that, it's up for debate, really. I'm going to drag Craft of Exile over. If my computer were... There we go. Windows 11 has not been kind to me. This is about the third or fourth take I've had to do with this. So, here we go. We've got duplicate currencies as a prefix, uh, duplicate currency as a suffix, and in my opinion, this would be the other role you're looking for. Orbs of Augmentation to drop as Chaos Orbs. Why I say that is because Chaos Orbs are easier to move around in a trade economy and in SSF better because you're going to be rolling your gear you're going to be rolling your maps so um, that is chaos orbs are more easily movable divines yes divines are fantastic and divines um, you can use on gear if you've got a really good gear to thing and divines can be used on the crafting bench but the most popular common trade currency in Peewee at the moment is chaos orbs Bearing in mind, one of the the second best way to make profit is to sell everything you get in in your whichever content you're farming, really, and then turn it all into chaos, turn that into fines, turn that into mirrors. End of story. Job done. Have fun. So in my opinion, that is the best trinket. Those three stats. If your trinket does not have double currency draw uh, duplication, it's trash. Get rid of it. Sell it. Um, I don't know how many of these are around on trade. I haven't looked. This video may change the prices of them. So, sorry. <laughs> After these three, anything you get here is, is just going to be a bonus, probably. It depends what it is. Um, but most of it is either a dupe, current, a dupe rewards from something when opening a reward chest. Um, should we talk about this one? Alright then, in my opinion, if you find a trinket like this, congratulations. If you get if it's got other roles on there that you can use, great, fantastic, use it. If you don't find one, don't buy one. They are not worth it. Last I heard, uh, any trinket with the Chaos Orb to Divine Orb is going for about 90 divines plus. Think how many builds you can buy and put together that will clear every single content in the game. It's not worth it. It's not, in my opinion, buying this trinket from trade is not worth the price. I would max pay 15 divines for this. Absolute max. It'll never go down to that much because market demand. But I would never pay more than 15 divines for this for, that, for a, a trinket that had that role on it. Now, if the trinket had go away this role on it, dupe currency, dupe currency, and Chaos Orbs drop as divine. Oh, in my opinion, that would be worth 90 divines. So worth it. Here endeth the lesson in trinkets. Let's move on to the next session. You may have noticed in previous sections of this video, I've got a set of blueprints sat here. I'm just going to touch on these because, again, it's another thing I get asked when running heist what is the most popular blueprints to run? So, um, let's get into that. This one. This is the most popular to run for the chance of getting that unusual gem that is worth an absolute fortune. It's a bit hit and miss. You can get nothing, or you could get the regrading lenses, which are oh, just awesome. So, 
as with any currency strategy it is completely RNG but this is the most popular the eye level doesn't matter the higher the eye level the more wings you get yes but for the actual rarity of the gems the quality of the gems the level of the gems that are contained doesn't matter I've had ulterior quality gems that are worth multiple divines drop from eye level 59 unusual gem blueprints I've also had blueprints where eye level 83 four winged fully revealed and walked out of there with not much more than a divine's worth of stuff because I just got very unlucky so but this is the most popular one closely followed by replica or experimentals you're after the regular experimented items can go if you get a eye level 83 base with a with a well rolled implicit experimented items can also be worth a fortune especially at this time of the league mid league uh, where people are looking for mean builds or really to find that extra one percent out of their build experimented items they can sell quite nicely thieves trinkets and currency that's also a really good one because obviously you're either going to get currency or you're going to get a thieves trinket never know when you're going to find that one divine that one percent chaos to divine please see previous section and then finally enchanted armaments enchantment armaments are probably the most rng out there yes they can drop orbs which people want to uh, craft their items um, they are extremely rare which means they're extremely valuable but you can also find an armament in there that can be worth a small fortune if it's eye level 83 on the right base with the right implicit oh raking the divines so which blueprint is the best to run for making money none of them all of them are have exactly the same chance of making you multiple divines as any other that is the pure statistical RNG statement all of these blueprints to a certain extent can are worth exactly the same because they are can be worth multiple divines it depends what you find at the end so if you see enchanted armaments are only like 30c for an eye level 83 grab it run it you could walk out there with an item with four divines well done <laughs> chop and change depend on the market if you do, if you're just after profit currency and you don't mind what you're running pick whichever blueprint is the cheapest bulk buy them and run them if you're just running to the end game reward for whatever reason and there's nothing there that's worth anything run back through and open up every single chest you can until the alert goes off and walk out with some currency that's what I do when I run BPs if there's not if, if there's nothing at the end game on the BP I'm running pick up open up every single chest you can and walk out with some currency at least then you can either bulk sell it or use it yourself for crafting here and it's the lesson on blueprints let's go to the outro in final closing of the video I hope you get my point that everything in this video is more or less personal opinion is vitally dependent on your strategy as ever if you want any help and advice please don't hesitate to contact me on discord my discord user ID is public knowledge you can also hit me up on Twitter comment on this video or one of my other videos or join me on the TFT discord server in the highest channel um, that is my main expertise mechanic I do know a lot about other mechanics as well also if if you want to you can PDM me in discord please just let me know that you have come to me from one of my videos so I actually reply if I'm unsure you will be ignored just to protect myself from trolls I hope you've enjoyed the video I hope you're not gonna roast me in the comments below have a fantastic weekend and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.